Hola, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing great. Today I'll be showing you how I made this kimono top and I also made a matching paperback shot which I did on my previous video and I will put that link in my description box if you like to view and without further ado, let's get started with this project. This is the fabric that I'll be using and my measurements are 44 inches wide and 56 inches long. I'm then going to fold it over lengthwise so that my new length will be 56 divided by 2 which is 28. That will be my length but my width will still remain the same. Now you have your back piece and the front piece and guys the longer your fabric length is the longer your kimono will be. Our next step is finding the center or the middle of our width. So our width was 44, we will divide that by 2 which will give us 22 and that will be the center of our fabric and we will mark that point. Next step is making our neckline and we will do that by measuring 3 inches from the middle point that we made and we will repeat the same on the other side. Then from the middle point, we are going to mark down 1 inch and that will be our neckline depth. We are now going to connect those lines that we made and they will look like a half circle. You can also use your curved ruler to connect the points and after we are done, we are then going to cut it out. Our next step is going to be determining our sleeves and I will do that by marking 9 inches down from one side of my fabric. From the 9 inch mark that we made, we are going to mark 11 inches in and that will be our armhole depth. I got my armhole depth by dividing my hips measurement by 4. So my hips measurements were 40 inches divided by 4 which gave me 10 inches. Then I added 1 inch because I want mine to be loose. After that we are going to connect the points with a ruler and cut. Now that we are done with the sleeves on this side, we are now going to repeat the same on the other side. This is how our kimono looks after cutting the neckline and the sleeves. From the center point that we made before, I will then measure down to the bottom with a tape measure and whatever I get, I will divide that by half and I will mark that point. Like for me, the length from my neckline to the bottom is 28, divide that by 2 which gives me 14. After that, I'll be marking 14. Then I will draw a line from that center point to the bottom. From the 3 inches marks that we made from the center, I will draw a straight line and connect it to the 14 inches mark. So this is where we drew our lines and marked. I also marked this as my front because we will only be cutting the front only as our opening and make sure you don't cut the back. This is how it looks after cutting and as you can see, I did not cut the back, I only cut the front. Our next step is pinning down the sides and sew with a half an inch sewing allowance. Next step is measuring all around my front opening and I got 69. Then I measured around my sleeve and I got 16 inches. Here I've cut three pieces of fabric. 
the first one is my front bias which is 69 inches long and 5 inches wide and the other two are my sleeve cuffs which are 17 inches long and 5 inches wide you can make yours wider or narrower if you like our next step is folding over our cuffs in half right sides facing each other then we are going to pin them and sew with a half an inch sewing allowance now that I've finished sewing them and ironed the seam, I'm now going to fold them over in half like so. Then I will match up the seams on my sleeve and I will pin them and sew. Next step is going to be folding over our bias in half and then we are going to be pinning it around the front piece and after that we will sew all around with a half inch sewing allowance. This is how it looks after we've already sewn the bias. I went ahead and finished off the seams with my serger and if you don't have a serger you can use your zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Our next step is going to be hemming and we will do that by folding over twice with a 1 inch hemming allowance and then we will sew. So we are done sewing our kimono and this is how it turned out. Now for me I decided to add some pockets to it so you can go ahead and stop here if you don't want to add some pockets. So I went ahead and cut two pieces of pockets and they are 7 inches wide and 7 inches long. I then folded one inch on one side and then folded half an inch on the other three sides. I'm then going to go ahead and sew. To determine where I'll be placing my pockets on my kimono, I'm going to be measuring 4 inches from the bottom and mark and then I'm going to measure 2 and a half inches from our bias and then I'll mark. Then that's where I'll be placing my pockets. Next thing I will do is pin and sew. And we are done guys. This is how our kimono looks after we finish sewing. You can even use belts to tie it around if you like. Thank you so much for watching and if you liked this video give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more go ahead and click the subscribe button. Anyway guys I wish you an amazing day and see you on my next video. Bye and God bless.